All right, everybody. It's time to do a little journey to the Amazon rainforest. Now, if we're going to go to the Amazon rainforest, we actually need to know something about the Amazon rainforest. So in this video, we're going to take a look at some facts about the Amazon rainforest, dispel some myths about the Amazon rainforest, and then we'll actually get to some fun animals and then our assignment, okay? So facts about the Amazon rainforest. By the way, the facts are important as well as getting rid of the myth because you're going to see these things on future tests, okay? So, certain facts. Amazon rainforest, largest rainforest in the world. Most middle school students know that. And so they go, okay, yeah, largest rainforest in the world. But what does that mean? When we say it's the largest, well, how large is it, all right? Well, it's over 2 million square miles, all right? So what does that mean? Well, think about it. Remember at the beginning of the year when we did Europe and we talked about the United Kingdom, which is made up of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland? Well, if you took the United Kingdom plus the country of Ireland, you could fit it in the Amazon rainforest 17 times over. That's how large it is. And most people think the Amazon rainforest is only in Brazil, but it's actually not the case. The majority is in Brazil. But when we're taking a look at the Amazon rainforest, the Amazon rainforest is mostly in Brazil, but you can also find parts of it in Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, uh, French Guiana, Suriname, and Guyana. All right, so that's how large the Amazon rainforest is. It is unbelievable. And because it is a rainforest, because it's in the tropical zone, think about it, the tropics, the tropical zone, that is located between the Tropic of Cancer at 23 and a half degrees north latitude to the Tropic of Capricorn at 23 and a half degrees south latitude. Because of its unique location, the tropics are home to many birds, fishes, mammals that you might not, that you won't find anywhere else on Earth. So it's actually, it's a fun spot. It's an unbelievable spot. I mean, unbelievable when you see some of the plant life but it is amazing if you are into science. By the way, it's always good to know more subjects than just one subject. So even I, as a social studies teacher, I definitely want to make sure that I know some science, some reading, and some math. And by some, I mean a lot of it. So you talk about science with ecosystems. This is unbelievably important. The Amazon also provides jobs for a lot of people. We'll talk about that later on in our assignment, all right? But a few, more, a few more facts about the Amazon rainforest that we absolutely need to know, okay? So, we already talked about the size of it. Okay, let's talk about this. If we're talking about the Amazon rainforest, uh, it's not just the Amazon River that flows through the Amazon rainforest. You're talking about hundreds of rivers. Hundreds of rivers throughout the Amazon rainforest. So, you've got lots of fresh water, but think about some of those rivers. Those rivers, some of those rivers are barely visited by anybody which means that you can have some really large fish, some really strange fish that most people haven't seen. And those fish are able to grow huge because you don't have a lot of people fishing, you don't have a lot of people, yeah, you don't have a lot of people hunting, I was gonna say, because depending on how you fish, you can use nets, you can use spears, or just fish from a bank. But you don't have all those people, so those fish are able to grow, and they are huge, right? And there's some really strange looking creatures in there. So hundreds of rivers, not just the Amazon River, that is your largest river by far, but you have hundreds of rivers as well. You also, in the Amazon rainforest, you have about 400 to 500 Amerindian groups. Now, if you're thinking Amerindian, what is that? So think about America and Indian and put it together and you have Amer, meaning America, Amerindian, Amerindians. So when people talk about South America or Central America, they will talk about Amerindian groups. Those are the native ethnic groups that were there first, okay? If we were in the United States and we're talking about native ethnic groups, we would say, oh, the Native Americans. If you're in Canada, you would say, oh, the First Nations peoples, all right? All those terms, depending on where they're located, they all refer to the native ethnic groups that were there first, okay? So Amerindian's a term you will hear. But there may be 400, 500 Amerindian groups, but here's the key. It's estimated that there's about 50 Amerindian groups that have never met anyone from the outside world. In other words, the rainforest, that's their home, but when, 
When we say never met anyone, in other words, imagine you don't know anything about cars, planes, helicopters, internet, electricity, nothing. You're still kind of living like it's 2,000 years ago, all right? There are 40 to 50 Amerindian tribes, Amerindian groups that live like that. They have no idea about the outside world, all right? I mean, amazing. You kind of think, oh, everybody knows about the world, what's going on. They might not have a lot of money. They might be poor, but everybody knows. No, there are still some tribes deep in these jungles. Never heard. I have no idea what America is, England, China, anything like that. Australia, Japan. Nope, never heard of it. Not even... Hey, how is our plant, planet, solar systems, all those things that we take for granted? There's still about 40 to 50 tribes that don't know anything about that, right? Now, a couple other things. 430 mammals, over 2.5 million types of insects, not 2.5 million insects total, 2.5 million different types of insects, okay? You've also got 40,000 plant species, 1,300 bird species, and 3,000 types of fish. And yes, by the way, I did read that off of a paper that I put right below that camera because there's no way I can remember all that. But think about that. Think about how many species altogether that is. That is just, that's simply amazing, all right? The Amazon rainforest, again, it's amazing beyond just simply, okay, where is it located? But what is in it? That is what makes it awesome. All right, now, we do have a couple myths that we need to dispel. Okay, you remember when we talked about World War II, and I said, all right, guys, let's get rid of some myth that middle schoolers believe about Adolf Hitler and how we're in Germany, okay? Well, now we're gonna go ahead and get rid of some myth that students believe about the Amazon rainforest, all right? How many of you guys have heard this? If the Amazon rainforest disappears, the planet will be destroyed. Or if the Amazon rainforest disappears, we won't be able to breathe. All the oxygen will be gone. No. Okay, guys, that is just a myth. There are enough trees in Europe, in counting Russia, going into Russia, because of the European part of Russia, going into the Asian part of Russia, there's enough trees there to give oxygen to the entire planet just by themselves. You've got other rainforests in Africa. You've got rainforests in Indonesia. And by the way, remember, plants give off oxygen. All plants give off oxygen. So guess what? You guys seen some grass in your front yard? It's giving off oxygen. You think there's a lot of grass in the world? Yes. So the Amazon rainforest could disappear tomorrow and all of us would be fine. Now, would that be fine for all of the plant and animal species that depend on this ecosystem? No. It would be a huge loss to lose those animals and plant species. Some of the Amerindian groups, would they lose their home? Absolutely. That would be terrible. But the planet is not going to die because the Amazon rainforest disappears. That's important for us to know. We always want to stay balanced in what the truth is. The truth is what balances you. All right? You don't have to stay balanced in the truth. Just know the truth. All right? You don't want to swing for emotion if that emotion goes beyond truth because then you'll become unbalanced. All right, so myth number one. Myth number two about the Amazon rainforest that we need to get rid of. How many of you guys have heard this? The Amazon rainforest, somewhere in the Amazon rainforest is the cure to cancer or the cure to all sorts of diseases. No. Now, you will hear scientists, what scientists say, what the responsible scientists say is this. We don't know, I mean, but there's so many plants that you might not find anywhere else on Earth. One of those plants, who knows what properties that plant has? Who knows what's in that plant? Maybe there might be a plant that we could find that could cure cancer one day, or there might be a plant that we could find some way, some day that might cure whatever, okay? You'll hear scientists, I said responsible scientists, most scientists will say that. You'll hear other people who aren't scientists, a lot of them kind of take it beyond to there's a cure for cancer out there. So trust me, if the Amazon rainforest held the cure to cancer, every country on earth would be guarding the Amazon rainforest. So it's just scientists speculate, who knows, maybe there could be something in the Amazon rainforest, but not that there actually is, 
Okay? It's always important when discussing any subject that we know the truth and we don't swing beyond that because, again, we'll become unbalanced and then it's kind of hard to be able to analyze some of the facts or some of the things that happen, okay? Like we'll discuss in our assignment later on. All right, before we get to our assignment, let's have a little fun. Let's see if you guys can figure out these pictures. I'm gonna go a little bit fast simply for time's sake. Boom. You guys know what that is? If you don't, it's called a poison arrow frog or a poison dart frog. Now, this little creature has enough poison in it to kill about 10 men. All right now, that does not mean that if you see this frog, you should run for your life, all right? Think about it, it's a frog. Frogs do not, when's the last time you ever heard, frogs killed 50 people today? Well, no, okay, this frog is not gonna run around killing you, all right? Its tongue doesn't, isn't even poisonous, all right? You can hold that frog in your hand. But if you try to eat that frog, it secretes the poison through its skin and that poison would kill you. Some of the Amerindian groups, what they do is they'll kill this frog and dip their arrows or darts in the skin, right? Creating a poison that you can then use to shoot large animals and kill them, all right? So it's kind of smart to do that. So poison arrow frog. Also, if you notice, it's got these striking colors and it comes in all colors and patterns. Well, most animals have colors that blend in with nature. This doesn't blend in. So whenever you see animals that don't blend in, and they have these bright colors, it's a warning sign to all the other animals saying, hey, you can eat me if you want, but it's gonna be your last meal. All right, what is this? Look at these wonderful nice little teeth right here. No, this is a piranha, all right? Now, a couple things. Piranhas do not live in every river and lake in South America. They do not live in every river and lake in the Amazon, but they are in some rivers, they are in some lakes in the Amazon. If you've watched one of those silly piranha movies, piranhas are not running around trying to eliminate all of humanity, all right? <laughs> but they are attracted to movement. And if you are in the water and you start running and moving, they will go to you, all right? So they, will, they do swarm around animals that are in the water and they can strip an animal bare to just its bones in a, in a minute. So these are piranhas. Look how cute he is. Uh, no, not that much. All right, ta-da. This is our mascot, by the way. Dobbins Middle School, our mascot is the jaguar. All right, so the jaguar, that is your largest cat in South America. You will find it in the rainforest. This is one of the few cats that likes water, which, I mean, if you're gonna live in the rainforest, you kind of have to be okay with water. So it will go through rivers, it will go through lakes. Very powerful animal. It hunts all sorts of rodents, all sorts of mammals. It will hunt birds. It even hunts little crocodiles that you'll see. Uh, their name is, uh, it's called a caiman, all right? So caiman is a type, if you think about it, there's crocodiles, alligators, caimans, and gharials, right? A caiman, you'll find a caiman that looks like an alligator. It will hunt that too. So jaguar is very powerful, really awesome animal. If you're British, you pronounce it jaguar, all right? But here in America, jaguar. Ta-da, what is this? This is a sloth. The sloth is very slow. It's not just that movie. Sloths are just slow. And if you look up sloth, I mean, it's just, it doesn't move fast at all for anything. It's very designed, it's just, its design is to go slow. You'll watch videos where there will be predators climbing trees to catch the sloth, and the sloth is trying to escape by grabbing on to the next tree. It just doesn't move. So it just it doesn't move fast. But sloth, sloth is a very weird looking animal, but it's, it's, it's fun, it, it's just weird. But it's still fun to look at. All right, these are macaws, all right? So macaws, again, if you watch that movie, a bunch of my students were saying Rio. I have not seen Rio, so I cannot endorse Rio at all, but apparently Rio is a movie, but it involves macaws, ta-da. Macaws, pink river dolphin. So no, it's not an albino dolphin, it's not a bold. One of my students asked if it was a bold dolphin, it's not a bold dolphin, but a bold, meaning not bold, but bold. All right, so this is the pink river dolphin. Spider monkeys, the harpy eagle. And yes, it has caught something right there. So the harpy eagle. 
Harpy eagles, I believe, are endangered. Pink river dolphins are also endangered species. But again, you're not going to find some of these species you're not going to find anywhere else on Earth. So Amazon River, always fun. Piranhas, eh, not that much fun. Poison arrow frogs, fun, as long as you don't try to eat them or anything like that. Okay, so Amazon Rainforest. By the way, in the description box, I'm going to link, there's a two minute, 40 second, I want you just to take a look at it so you can get an idea of how vast the Amazon is. There's a drone, it's a drone video. So a person's taking their drone in Bolivia and just so you can see how vast it is. And think about it, it's just a little percentage of the Amazon. So I want you to take a look at that in the description box below. All right, here's your assignment. And we still got, we got 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 50 seconds. All right, so let's go a little bit quick. Here's your assignment. In Brazil today, there is a debate in the Brazilian government, the president of Brazil, they have to balance both sides of this debate. So on one side of the debate, you have loggers. Those are people that cut down trees and process them and sell them. That's where we get lumber from. So you have loggers and you have farmers. And loggers and farmers are arguing, hey, let us cut down trees in the Amazon rainforest. The loggers are going to argue, hey, we provide jobs to thousands of Brazilians. And not only, do we not only do we provide jobs, but we also provide products from the lumber for the people of Brazil. Farmers say, hey, let us clear some of the land. I mean, we'll work hard, but if we can clear some of that land and be able to grow crops on it, then that will feed our families and we can make money off of it. And that will actually, that will keep us alive. On the other hand, you have environmentalists and scientists, and their argument is don't cut any of the rainforest because there's all sorts of unique species of plants and animals in the rainforest. And not only that, but who knows? Maybe one of these unique plants might have a cure for some sort of disease. Now, if you're the Brazilian government, how do you keep both sides happy? Because neither side is wrong, okay? Think about it. If you're the Brazilian government and how's the, how's the sound of my map falling? All right. So if I was about to say, if you're the Brazilian government, if you just say, okay, we're not cutting down any trees in the rainforest, well now you have thousands of people who are now unemployed. They have no job and they have no way to make any money to help their families. And not only that, but your economy is about to go down when you have that many people who are now unemployed. If you swing to the other extreme and go, okay, well, hey, cut down all the trees in the rainforest. Well, now, guess what? Now you're going to have a lot of animals that go extinct. You're going to have a lot of plants that go extinct. And you're going to have a lot of Amerindian groups that might not have a home anymore, that aren't going to have a home anymore. Now, if you're the Brazilian government, this is your assignment. So this is your second assignment that you're submitting to me. How do you balance both? So what I want you to do is come up with a plan Let's pretend that you are the president of Brazil. I want you to come up with a plan that helps both the farmers and loggers and also the scientists. So you need a plan that allows the loggers and farmers to use the rainforest. And, you also, and your plan also needs to preserve the rainforest. You need to have a balance of both. All right, so I want you to think about that. I want you to figure out, okay, well, how do I do that? How do I balance both? Loggers, I make the loggers and farmers happy, and I also make the environmental, the environmentalists and the scientists happy. There's going to have to be some compromise. Both sides are not going to get everything that they want, but there's going to be a there's got to be a way that you can come up with a law that is going that's going to help both sides. Okay, so that's what I want you to do. I want you to type up what rule or law you come up with. Here's what should happen: this, this, and this. That will make both sides happy, okay? Submit that to me, and you'll be done. All right, take care, guys.